you know, just happy for our guys. So, you know, again, we've talked about just playing with passion and, um, you know, with them and not having miles, they were going to come out. I thought they had good bounce, uh, but we, we took it to them. I thought the start of the game, we were pretty good. Second start of second half, just like the game in uh, Bramlage, they took it to us, but we never surrendered the lead, kept it 39, 37. I believe Mike McGurl hit the big long three when they kind of lost him. Uh, got it to five and then, you know, something like a, I don't know, 20 to two run or 20 to eight run, something like that, where we got a 12 point advantage and, and got it up in double digits. Then it's now it's the same as last time. They're going to press us, take care of the basketball, got to score up, got to be strong with it. Uh, we did a good job, better job this time of looking down the court and, and getting it over their press and then just uh, finishing the game. Uh, great balance. Uh, you know what it was a 2016 uh, 14, 13, uh, a lot of people contributed. Carlton comes in and does a nice job. Ish goes and hits a big shot when we're kind of struggling. Uh, you know, it's just a, a good a good win for us. Uh, I'm happy with, you know, just one game at a time and, and keep moving up the stairs instead of down. And um, they're, they're playing with good passion and they're focused and you know, I, I hope we can continue that. Obviously, it doesn't get easy with, with Baylor, and they're coming off a, a really tough loss on uh, today at, at Kansas. And, uh, you know, we're going to we're gonna have to play at a high level, and we're going to have to have the same production and hopefully a great crowd on, on Wednesday night. Thank you, Coach. Uh, we'll start with questions from Tim Fitzgerald. Hey, Coach, good win. Um, I, you mentioned earlier this season about uh, not losing a home-and-home home to any of the Big 12 teams. So how good was this to go out and get this one on the road after losing to them at home? Yeah, you know, you if you want to have a chance to be in the top part of the league, you can't get swept by people. And, um, you know, this is a team that beat us at home. We had to come back and, and find a way to get a win. Um, obviously, we, you, you have a little bit of an advantage because Miles is out, but you know, heck, we've had seven guys in games. We, you know, not once, twice, and and we've missed a bunch of other starters. So, and we and we talked about before the game. Obaji doesn't play at Iowa State, and Kansas still goes in. So you know, teams are going to keep coming. The other guys are going to step up and and play well. So we we just said no excuses. We're going to have to go earn it. Uh, we did. Um, you know, it it keeps us. We have the same number of wins they do. Four in the league. Uh, obviously they have two, there's two short games and we got two more losses, but, um, you know, we're, we're just, we're hanging in there. Uh, obviously Wednesday, every game's going to be big and, and we just got to focus. We can't look too much in the future. Just got to focus now on Baylor. Are these seasons you mentioned what KU went through and won? Are, are these, these seasons with the pandemic plus injuries really testing benches to see how much they can deliver in the course of a game? Yeah, there's no doubt you get, you know, again, credit to Kansas. When you watch that thing, guys, you know, two, three guys step up and, and make plays. Uh, you know, we've had, you know, I guess, you know, we sells out Mike McGurl gets a chance and has been very, very productive for us the last couple of days and feel, you know, playing like a senior and, and we kind of challenged them. But yeah, the, the bench is, uh, it makes a difference. I you know, Carlton yesterday, his knee hurt. I didn't know if he'd play. And and I, Luke Sauber must have a magic, a magic potion or something because he, that was maybe one of his best efforts for us. So little plays like that, uh, you know, make a, a big difference for us. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Uh, next question to Cole. Hey, Bruce, I was wondering if you could kind of talk about where Ish is right now. I know he had that big three in the corner, but kind of talk about where he is right now and, and what he needs to do to get back to where he was earlier in the season. Uh, you know, he plays, uh, he played 19 minutes, you know, tonight he was plus eight. Um, you know, just do what he does. And that means make, he's got to make shots if he's going to play for and let, let things come to him. And then he's, he's got to be solid on defense and, uh, and, and, you know, box out, you know, don't let, I don't care if he gets rebounds, but he's got to make sure his guys don't get rebounds. And so, you know, I keep telling them, you know, don't let what you can't do affect what you can do, do what you do. And, and don't, don't let it mentally defeat you. I think he's such a good young man and he, he knows basketball. He, he watches it. He cares about the team. I think sometimes it, it he overthinks things. 
and then it and then it affects him and then he doesn't do what he's what he should be doing is what he's good at and and so like again just do what you do um somebody just told me mark smith said know your role and 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 do it and mark smith has been a great example of that and then i know you touched on carlton a little bit but just how have you seen him progress from not playing in the non-conference to where he is now? And what do you see him, his role being as you move forward towards the end of the season? Well, it's not only not playing in the non-conference, it was not practicing. You know, that it's not practicing in the summer, not practicing in the fall, not practicing till December. So that, you know, it's just, this is all new to him. Um, you know, it, it, it you know, I, again, I, I said before, we, he needs a non-conference, he needs a summer, he needs a summer trip. Um, to get time and experience to, you know, to feel good about himself. His, a lot of it, he's got to get stronger and all that, but it's just being confident. Like he gets that rebound and instead of just tucking it, you know, he tries to, you know, dish it to somebody, then it ends up being a shot clock, not shot clock, whatever, you know, just be strong with him. But he did make a couple plays. He catches it. He's mobile. Um, he gives us a different look than Davion and Casey. So um, I'm just hoping Slowly but surely, he'll, he'll feel a little more confident and make some plays for us. And then last question I have is both Nigel and Mark told us uh, about the mentality when it comes to rebounding. Is that something that's been the main focus of practice these last few weeks? Yeah, actually, it's been for since we probably got back from Christmas. And, you know, I hope it slowly but surely kicks in. You know, they did have 15 offensive rebounds, but we ended up getting more second chance points. And then finally down the stretch, we did get the big rebounds when they missed to kind of be able to ice the game. Uh, but, you know, it's the other guys for Marquise to get six, for Nigel to get four. You know, Mike McGurl had 10 the other night. He gets he gets three. Um, you know, our bigs just – they're right now they're just not at that point where they're getting rebounds. I wish they were. So it's got to be everyone else. They all got to come back to rebound and help us. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Uh, next, next question to Michael. Yeah, Bruce, uh, eight steals and uh, sub 40% shooting night from TCU. Just to address your defense, uh, how on point it was tonight. Well, the things I put on the board were passion. You know, we got we to gotta keep that. We got You got to be passionate about K-State and helping us win. But I said, we also, if we're going to beat them, we got to get better. And we, even though they only had 50-something, I, I thought we – uh, or 60, whatever they got the first game. And, you know, they had 52 with, you know, one one minute left in the game. I, I still thought we, when you watch it, we could have been better defensively. And that was the whole thing we kept talking about the last two days. You got to, you got to improve defensively. You got to, we can't have the breakdowns to, when they, they got us on some back cuts the first time we lost people, um, you know, just our big guys didn't do a good job of cutting off the lane drive. You know, so all those things. So, it, it, you know, and especially the second half when it, after they made the run, I thought we did a really good job defensively of, um, you know, making it hard on them, making them earn things, um, you know, and, and, you know, just uh, keeping them at bay. Again, you know, we've been pretty good at three-point shooting defense. Uh, you hold them to 21% tonight. So that's that's pretty good. That's back where our numbers have been. And Nigel Pack goes for goes seven for ten with three assists. <laughs> How dependable has Nigel become for you? Uh, you know, I I just wish I I we're all we were kind of all disappointed. I know he made Sports Center. At least I heard that. I didn't even get to see it because I went home and watched TCU. But um, I thought he he and I've said it before. He just he doesn't get the pub from you know maybe the our, our national media that he needs to. I mean, this is this guy. This is he just does it. You know, seven for 10, three for six, three for four, four rebounds, 20s, career high steals, three assists. I mean, that that's pretty good. And they know he's going to, we're running him off screens and he's still getting the shots. So he just is, and he had to play 37 minutes. He was dead down the stretch. So um, he's, a, he's, he's just become a pretty good player. He's one of the better guards in our league, which, you know, I think, uh, and which is full of good guards. And, you know, if he's one of the better guards in our league, that means he's probably one of the better guards in the country. Are you starting the All-America campaign for Nigel? Oh, I don't know about that, but I just wish somebody would give him a little more pub, some national people. and Because he's, you know, he's he's been pretty consistent. I think the the one thing he has been has been dependable and consistent. 
I kind of challenged them. I, I thought his worst game was the first TCU game on offense and on defense. And, uh, you know, he, he's, he stepped up tonight. And, uh, you know, he was, he was better on both ends of the court. Thanks for your time. Yep. Hey, Ryan, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Um, obviously, you picked up the win tonight, but but still got out rebounded, thirty six to thirty three. How do you re, uh, rectify this rebounding issue that you guys are having? Is it sort of um, just a physicality problem, or is it maybe just the lineup that you have out there on the court? I think people just know that they, they just put it up there and they're just crashing, and we're going to have to man up and and deal with it. Um, it's uh, our league is very physical. You got pretty good athletes. These guys, they just have good long athletes like Jamie Chad at Pittsburgh and, and they, you know, they obviously they're one of the best in the country. This is not just against us. They've done it all year. And, and, you know, against LSU a couple of weeks ago, who's probably got as good athletes as anybody, you know, and it's just going to be a, a rebound by, by a, a team rebounding, I guess, by committee, whatever. And like I say, the, for Marquise to get six and, you know, Mike McGurl and, and obviously Mark, again, another double-double. We don't even talk about that in a big rebound and one when they, you know, they're getting it, cutting it down to seven or whatever it was. Um, you know, it, you know, we just, we're going to have to do it by committee. I would love for our night. Uh, Carlton got one, Davion got one. Casey didn't help us, but uh, it would be nice if those guys joined the, the rebound party. Thank you, Coach. Yep. Any other questions, Tim? Did you have something else? Uh, Michael, you have anything else? You good? Yeah, I've got one. Just a four game oh, from ahead. Marquise. Just a four game from Marquise Noel tonight. Coach. It, it was pretty good. We depend on him. Uh, you know, 14.6 assists. Obviously, he wants to make those threes. I think once in a while, he, they're just, he, he shoots a couple tough ones. But, uh, you know, he, he's learning. He's trying to do what we're asking. He, you know, you look at plus minus, he's plus 17. That's pretty good as a point guard. That's your job to help you win. And and obviously the margin is important. But, uh, you know, there's, once in a while he goes a little hair, uh, haywire, whatever the word is, rogue, whatever. He just kind of, he feels forced to issue it. Uh, but he, he's he's definitely made some strides from, from where he was uh, from the start of the season to now. And he wants to win. I mean, I, I think that, that's really as, as important as anything. There were a Thank you again. Yep. Did you ask another one? I didn't hear. No, I'm I think we got them all, Coach. Okay. <laughs> appreciate it. I think that's all we have, Coach. I appreciate your time.